were looking at the idea of like illusions and how you can create depth of field. So we've done like t-shirts where you have um, the crystal fabric, so it looks like like a psychedelic kind of doily or like a kind of like a prism. Now, I don't think that crystals are something that we automatically think of as, as being something for menswear in general. So first of all, that was a surprise. Second of all, the way that he de dealt with them, they weren't, apart from on the boots, they were quite subtly used. So it didn't feel like such a stretch to imagine men wearing that, especially the kind of young, hip, fashionable men that would want to buy into that kind of label. It's all about collecting. So it's about standalone looks. Each look stands as own as if someone owned it for a while, destroyed it. It's like wearing your mother's stockings with, you know, with a punk top, with a Hawaiian shirt, mixing all these different combinations. So we've used like the ceramic, which is matte, with like hyper crystals on the shoe, which is really glossy. And that's, it's that juxtaposition which actually makes it interesting and more masculine, I think. It is quite kind of stompy boot, but flash of crystals on the front. It's quite, it is quite surprising. And also there was like necklaces and belts that seem to have like sort of hooks with sort of crystals on them. And then obviously it was more subtle on the tops with like the embellishment and it's sort of very gently sort of fluttered um, down the runway, which I thought was quite nice. Swarovski and J.W. Anderson is, is, is a, a natural marriage because obviously Swarovski has such a fantastic fashion heritage and has always been great at supporting new and upcoming talents. And I think J.W. Anderson's talent for um, ornamentation is a perfect match.